Hey, what's up, y'all? Today I wanted to show you a really cool trick I've developed using um, Ableton's Reverb. Uh, a lot of the times when you're playing live, uh, you, you create transitional sounds, uh, the classic, you know, tension and release kind of stuff. So you have a buildup. Sometimes it's like a whoop, or uh, commonly uh, it's a white noise. It's like coming in. And then on the downbeat, you go, and then it goes away, right? Tension and release. Well, a lot of the times you're searching for those samples on the internet, you're looking for white noise, or maybe you're even creating them with the synthesizer, but a lot of the times those samples have literally nothing to do with the actual audio that you're working with. So sometimes you have to repitch them, sometimes you got to go through all this extra trouble just to get the sound that you're looking for for that uh, build-up. Well, what I've done, um, I'll go ahead and just play this for you, I've got this white noise trick mapped to my crossfader on this UC4. Um, so just go ahead and listen to what this sounds like. So as I slide the slider up, I add the white noise. And I can pull it out quick. Right? So I'm just creating a tension and release kind of um, effect live. So, uh, I can use this to go to navigate my set and go to different parts. So maybe I want to go from this part to another song. Well, I'm building this up, I'm going to another song. Right? I use this all the time. It's really useful. Um, another thing you can do, I'll just I'll just play a different section of a different of a different song. I can use this as a cool little, right? Just a little fun little. Right, just a little. Right? And you can even record this kind of thing. I mean, it's just really useful. So, so how is this done? Well, instead of looking at all this confusing stuff, let's just pay attention to this one reverb return. It's just This is just a return track, and, and so you don't get confused, all I've done is I've shrank, you know, most of the time, Ableton loads with it looking like this. I just shrunk, shrank, <laughs> good morning, shrank this down a little bit so that um, it's just kind of, I can see what I'm trying to look at here. So, so I'm looking at this return. I dropped a reverb track into it, okay? Um, I decided that, and you can do this however you want. At this point, I've decided to sweep out a lot of the lows because I just want the lows to come through. I'm trying to make white noise, right? So so what reverb essentially is, is it's a delay plugin that's sampling a lot of your audio all at once, and it's creating a noisy wash, a white noise wash out of the audio that it's listening to. Um, I set a little bit of pre-delay so that I don't mess my transients up too much, but obviously when this is set up high, it's going to wash out some of your, 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 your top end. Um, and these are just kind of some of the settings that, that, that I've that I've made. Um, you can create this reverb however you want. What I think is really important is that your diffusion network allows the highs to last longer. So you can just take a look at how this is going. So essentially, it's a it's a long decay time reverb. Okay, it's pretty wide, um, and it, the this is just again this is just a matter of preference about how I, I've set this up. Um, I have been experimenting though with different qualities. Um, because they, I mean, this, the quality setting on the reverb really, really changes the way that it sounds. And sometimes what's interesting is that I prefer the sound of the eco mode, which is kind of like the, the, what you would consider maybe the crappiest sound. But let's just go ahead and listen to the differences here. Or you can check out like the high mode, which is supposedly high, I mean, it's just higher quality. Right, so it's just it's just a different sound, um, kind of less uh, granular sounding, a little bit less gritty, a little bit more smooth. Um, but I mean, maybe that's not what you're going for. So, so that that's one of the things that'll have a lot of effect over the sound. Um, so, how is this done? Sorry, I'm gonna. <laughs> how is this done? So, I've just all I've done is I've mapped the same MIDI controller that turns the reverb send up. Notice that all these tracks are already. This, this source audio right here, all this uh, uh, original audio that's coming, is always being fed to this first reverb return. But the reverb return is turned all the way down, so you, unless I turn this knob up, you can't hear it, right? It's always being sent there, right? There's just no reverb unless I turn it up. So 
with with the same controller, I have mapped a track volume to this crossfader. You can use any any MIDI knob, any uh, slider. The reason I I just I prefer using sliders because I can quickly turn it down and quickly turn it up. Uh, some people like the, the the twist move, whatever, whatever, whatever you feel like, whatever you want to have fun with. That's what this is about. So I'll slide the slider all the way up um, to get up to zero dB and then slide it all the way down to get to all the way turned down, right? But at the very same time, I've mapped that same exact controller to the freeze control of the reverb so that at 64 cc's, which is halfway, right? Halfway up this controller, it will engage the reverb's freeze control. Now, why did I choose halfway? Well, well, one of the reasons is that sometimes... Or at least what what I've detected is that the ambient noise in a room, like most people aren't really even going to hear the reverb until it's about right there. And two, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to capture a part of the audio to repeat over and over and over again. And that can then, once it's past 64, be turned up to the degree where people can hear it and then to the degree where it's almost overwhelming. And then I can flip it back down and be done with it. Okay, so watch this freeze as I as I turn this control up. So I'm halfway right here. As you can see, it's froze. And I just froze one little spot. Turn it all the way up and out. Okay? So the freeze is a, is a really necessary component of this because let's say that you're at a part where the music is changing. There's a lot of changes happening. Let's just go to a place... Let me speed that up. So, right now there's not really too many sustaining sounds, right? But once I get this frozen, all that it's really froze right there is kind of that, you can hear the snare drum's got a lot of high end information in it, and it's kind of smearing that out. That's why the freeze is necessary. So once again, just an example of how I would use this. I'm turning this up. Now I'm going to go to my next part. One, two. Oh, it's getting unbearable. Ah. Right. So that's really all that that is. It's a very simple trick, but it's so useful. Um, I find myself using this... Uh, I mean, almost at every larger trans uh, <laughs> transmission, every larger transition in my songs, I end up using this this trick. Um, so hopefully this is a nice little neat trick you can use to add just a little bit more to your live show and to give you a little bit more control over what's happening in the here and now. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Love you guys so much. See you next time. Bye.